Throughout the 14th century BCE, the kingdom of Arzawa emerged as a major power in Anatolia. The decline of their enemies, the Hittites, and the expansion of their allies, the Achaeans, enabled the Arzawan rulers to extend their power and influence well beyond their traditional borders and reach heights like never before. However, during the later part of the century, the Hittites, led by an ambitious king Shupiluliuma and his successors, managed to rebuild the Hittite Empire, and it wouldn't be long until Hatti and Arzawa squared off for the ultimate supremacy in western Anatolia. The state of Arzawa was the most prominent successor kingdom of the former Asuwa League, a western Anatolian confederation defeated by the Hittite king Tudhalia in the previous century. As most of the other successor states either fell under the Hittite influence or at least decided not to openly challenge them, the kingdom of Arzawa allied with the emerging Achaeans of the Mycenaean Greece and continued to openly oppose the Hittite Empire. 14th century BCE started off well for the Arzawans, heavily profiting from the Achaean expansion of power and influence in the area, but also missing no opportunity during the decades of Hittite weakness, which ultimately resulted in sack of Hattusa by the Kaskian tribes of the north. Arzawans, traditionally backed by the Achaeans, seized the opportunity and conquered the unprotected Hittite border areas and vassal states and installed their own allies close to the core territory of the Hatti. Ultimately, the Hittite misfortunes would come to an end with the emergence of an ambitious prince and general, Shupiluliuma, who managed to drive off the Kaskian and Armenian tribes. As he overthrew his brother and seized the Hatti throne for himself, Shupiluliuma was able to consolidate the Hittite power and reconquer many of the lost territories. Among them was the land of Pitasa, which the Arzawans had attempted to hold on as a client state of their own. As Shupiluliuma died in 1322 BCE and his son and successor Arnawanda II fell victim to a plague the same year, the youngest of the brothers, Morsili II, was crowned the new king of Hatti. In Arzawa, the kingdom was ruled by Uha Ziti, a strong and respected ruler, enjoying a stable reign and supremacy over many other lands in western Anatolia. Uha Ziti had respected Shupiluliuma, but did not have the same opinion of the young king Marsili. As the new Hittite king was immediately tested by the Kaskians, Uhaziti used the opportunity to attempt to even further expand into the Hittite sphere of influence. The border territories of Atarima, Hursanasa and Suruda were now loyal to Uhaziti and it became clear that Arzawa and Hatti were on an inevitable collision course. As King Morsili achieved victory over the Kaskians to the north, he now started preparations for his second campaign, aimed at Arzawa. At some time between 1322 and 1320 BCE, the Hittite army invaded the border territories of Atarima, Hursanasa and Suruda, defeating and subjugating those cities. Their local rulers, however, managed to escape to the Arzawan territory and soon enough Morsili II officially demanded their extradition from Uhaziti. The Arzawan king bluntly denied the request, even mocking his Hittite counterpart. You are a child, you know nothing and install no fear in me. 
your land is now in ruins, and your infantry and chariotry are few. Against your infantry I have many infantry, and against your chariotry I have many chariotry. Your father had many infantry and chariotry, but you, who are a child, how can you match him? Soon after, Marsili was attacked by a Nerzawan expeditionary force, but the young king achieved yet another success, driving off the Arzawans and burning down several border cities before returning to Hattusa to prepare for the big war. Uhaziti apparently did not think much of Marsili and had been already making war preparations of his own. The Achaeans were preoccupied with an internal struggle at Mycenae, but even without direct Greek support, Uhaziti had many allies in Anatolia and was confident in victory, and so were many of the former Hittite allies of the area. Manapatarhunta, the ruler of Seha Riverland, who had come to power thanks to the Hittite help, now decided to turn his back on the Hatti and was enlisted among the Arzawan allies. The only ruler who turned down the call of Uhaziti was the king of Mira, Maskiluwa, who was married to Marsili's sister and decided to stick to neutrality instead, despite the Arzawan repercussions. As Marsili II was marching towards the Arzawan territory, an extraordinary event took place and was recorded in the annals of Marsili. When I had set out and arrived at Mount Lawasa, the storm god, my lord, made manifest of his providence. He launched a lightning bolt, and my army saw the lightning bolt, as did the land of Arzawa. The lightning bolt traveled and struck the land of Arzawa, the capital Apasa, the city of Uhaziti. Uhaziti fell on his knees and became ill, and being ill he did not come to battle against me. Rather, he dispatched his son, Piyama Kurunta, against me, together with infantry and chariotry. He met me in battle at the Astrapa River, and I, my majesty, fought with him. In the subsequent battle, Morsili achieved decisive victory, totally destroying the Arzawan army. The Hittites proceeded to the capital of Ephesus unopposed, and Uhaziti, together with his sons Piyama Korunta and Tapala Zanauli, fled to the Aegean islands controlled by the Achaeans. The remaining Arzawans evacuated the city and fled to the nearby fort city of Poranda and Mountain Arinanda, two of the last remaining Arzawan strongholds. Morsili would soon conquer the mountain, claiming at least 15,500 captives. The following spring, Uhaziti died of his illness in exile on one of the Aegean islands. His son, Tapala Zunauli, soon arrived to Poranda in the last attempt of the Arzawan resistance. However, the Arzawan prince was no match for the Hittite power. As Morsili scored yet another victory, Tapala Zunauli retreated back inside the city walls, which was quickly afterwards put under siege by the Hatti. As the water supply was cut off, Tapala Zunauli was aware that the defeat was imminent. The prince rounded up his family, his followers and his remaining soldiers and fled the city by night. However, Morsili quickly realized it and ordered chase, capturing Tepala Zanauli's wife, children, supplies and all of his followers. The Arzawan prince alone barely managed to escape and subsequently the Hittite army entered Paranda, capturing more than 16,000 Arzawans. 
With this victory, all of Arzawa was now subjugated by King Marsili II. The Achaeans, who still held possessions in Anatolia, chiefly among them the city of Miletus, now entered negotiations with the great king of Hatti. The Achaean king agreed to extradite Uhazitis' son Piyama Karunta together with other Arzawan chiefs that fled before the Hittites, all of them now being dispatched to Hattusa. Thus finally ended the independence of the kingdom of Arzawa, which was now divided into various smaller client lands under the firm hegemony of the Hatti. Please consider subscribing and sharing the video, as this is a one-person production and it greatly helps the visibility of the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. I would like to thank History with Sai, Nico and the State Care MV for their continuous support and contribution. If you would like to become a Patreon member, feel free to do so by clicking the link in the video description. This was 1XTV and we'll see you again soon.